Hello everyone, it's time to get our computer hooked up to a network. In this video, we're going to do a wired and wireless configuration using our Cisco wireless router. To start, we will connect our computer's Ethernet port using a network cable to one of our LAN ports on the back. I take my computer's Ethernet cable and plug it into one of our LAN ports. Next, we want to get this wireless router connected to the internet. So I'll take my internet cable from my modem and plug that into my WAN port on the back. At this time, I can go to my computer's web browser and I can type in the IP address of my Cisco wireless router. If you do not know the default IP address of your wireless router, you can look it up in the documentation that came with it. Or you can use some command line tools on your user device. My wireless router has the default IP address of 192.168.1.1. I'll type it in and I'll click enter. Immediately, my wireless router asks for credentials. I will use the credentials I found in my documentation, which was a username of Cisco and a password of Cisco. Consult your documentation to find your credentials. I'll click on login. Immediately now, I can't do any configuration changes except to change the default password. The old password was Cisco, as we mentioned. I can see that there's some minimum requirements I need to follow, as well as a password strength meter down below. The password strength meter is not foolproof, but it does help you in determining password complexity. For the new password, I can type in something a little more complex than before, and I can get a password strength supposedly if strong. But again, how much do you trust these meters? They help though. With the new password selected, I'll click save. And I know it's going to work because it's going to log me out of my wireless router and require me to log back in with my new credentials. I'll use the username of Cisco and then my new password. And then I can click log in. And now we can actually configure our firewall router settings. To get started, we're going to take a look at the WAN settings. That's going to be inside of our networking section. And by default, we're in WAN. We can see that the internet connection type is using DHCP for our internet addressing. Also, for our DNS addressing, we have that set to automatically get that as well from our ISP, our internet service provider. If we wanted to change this to utilize a static address, we could do so. If we wanted to change our DNS servers that we're utilizing to not be from our ISP, but maybe from Cisco's OpenDNS or other servers, we could also select that here as well. Besides our WAN settings, we can go over to the LAN settings, and in our local area network settings, we can see a lot of items that we can configure. To start off here, what we can see is the local address of our wireless router. This is the default address provided by the manufacturer of my router. If I'd like to, I can put in a new value here and then click save. Besides just changing the IP address on my wireless router itself, we can change the subnet mask, which controls the network size. Also, we have DHCP server settings. By default, my wireless router is acting as my DHCP server. Down below the DHCP server settings, we can see the starting address that we're giving out to the user devices as well as how many user devices we're supporting with DHCP. The default on my router here is 50 devices. If I'd like to have more devices on my local area network, I can increase this number from 50 to a higher value, for example, maybe 100. As we continue on looking at our settings, what we'd like to take a look at here is, what if I didn't need the DHCP server on this router? What if I had a separate server running on my network? I could use my disable radial button to actually turn off DHCP on this device. When we talk about DNS settings, right now we're getting our DNS utilizing our WAN port and receiving it from our ISP. If I wanted to change what DNS server my users on my network are using, I can use the drop down menu here for DNS and I can have it used as below, where I get to specify multiple DNS servers for my user devices to target. So this has been great and awesome so far, but what we want to do now is take a look at our wireless settings. I'm going to go ahead and click on wireless on the left side. I'm not going to save my changes. And our wireless screen loads up. Now inside of the wireless settings, one of the first things we'll take a look at is this enable checkbox. This says our wireless 
transmitter is turned on and wireless is running on this device. If you wanted to disable wireless on your device, you can uncheck that radial button and it effectively makes our wireless router firewall just a router firewall. This will disable the wireless transmitter. This would come in handy if you want this to act as a router, then you have other devices on your network that are acting as wireless access points to provide wireless coverage for your enterprise network. For us, we want to keep the wireless on so we can continue with this video. Next, in the wireless network mode drop-down box, we can select which wireless to support. If we leave the default of BGN mixed, it's going to be a slower wireless network than going with GN mixed, or G only, or N only. For myself, I like to do GN mixed. I'm not going to provide legacy support for wireless B. Below that, we need to take a look at the wireless channel. We can leave this at the default of automatic, where the wireless router will determine automatically the best wireless frequency to utilize to avoid interference. If you wanted to statically set your radio frequency to use, we could do that here as well, but we'll leave it at auto. Down below, I have multiple wireless networks. I can deploy these on the wireless router all at the same time. By using the variety of edit buttons down below, I can change the wireless SSID, I can change the wireless password, I can even change the type of security for our wireless, as well as the maximum amount of wireless clients per wireless network I'm deploying. For example, if I click on the checkbox for the first wireless network of Cisco SB1, I can then click on the edit button down below. Immediately, I can change the wireless network name. Right now it's Cisco SB1. I can change this to Business Connect. Do I want the wireless name of Business Connect to be seen and visible by everybody? I can control that with the SSID broadcast button. Also on the far right, we can even control the maximum amount of clients allowed to connect, which I can change this to, for example, 40. When I'm done with these settings, I will click Save and my wireless router is going to change Cisco SP1 to now be the name of Business Connect. Also, I'll be allowed to have 40 wireless users connected at a time. Next, if I select the checkbox for that wireless network again, and then I'll click on Edit Security Mode, it'll take me to a new screen. And in Security Mode, I can see my wireless name that I've configured, followed by the Security Mode drop-down. Right now, by default, we have WPA2 Personal. This uses the encryption of AES. This is more secure than choosing something like WPA2 Personal Mixed, which utilizes AES encryption and the legacy TKIP for backward compatibility. For us, we want the security mode of WPA2 Personal with AES encryption, which is more secure, and we will set up our password here. For example, how about this? Awesome. If you want to see what it looks like, that's my password. Now I'll click save and this will create the wireless password that my users will need to type in in order to access the wireless name of Business Connect. With the wireless network named and our wireless password created, I go to my computer's wireless settings and I can see Business Connect is ready to be connected to. I can click on that, click connect, and I can put in that password and once I hit next, we should get a wireless network connection and we are good to go. We are seeing this connected. We are accessing the radio frequency being sent off by my wireless transmitter on this wireless router. Now that we've completed this wired and wireless config walkthrough video, make sure you take the time to explore your own wireless router